and thank you so much for joining us for today's conversation on women's health, part of the Digital Doc Series presented by Aligned Modern Health. We are joined by Dr. Alexandra McKillop and Monique Wheeler, a functional medicine physician and acupuncturist at Aligned Modern Health. Before we get started, we'd just like to introduce who we are in case it's your first time joining a Digital Doc webinar. Aligned Modern Health is Chicagoland's top-rated health and wellness service provider, offering support for the whole body. We really aim to get to the root cause of why people are feeling what they're feeling and not just focusing on one siloed symptom or condition. Our 18 clinics in the Chicagoland area are supported by several different integrative services, meaning we all work together to maximize the outcomes of our patients' treatment plans. Our clinics are supported by a physical medicine practice, including chiropractic care, injury prevention and injury rehabilitation, athletic performance support, and clinical massage therapy. Our acupuncture team is wonderfully beneficial for physical pain, but also some intangibles like stress, anxiety, depression, sleeplessness, and insomnia, men's and women's health and hormone balancing, pregnancy and fertility support seasonal allergies, among a host of other conditions and concerns. The practice is also supported by some other modalities under the traditional Chinese medicine umbrella, like cupping, moxibustion, and herbal medicine. Our services are rounded out both in clinic and via telemedicine with our functional medicine and nutrition team. We like to say this is a great way to look internally to better understand why you feel what you feel externally. We support a lot of gastrointestinal and autoimmune disorders, bloating, constipation, fatigue, migraines, food sensitivities, weight management, hormone balancing, nutritional counseling, the list really goes on and on. It is our pleasure to join you here today for the conversation on women's health. We will take questions at the end of the presentation, so please do feel free to type them into the Q&A icon on your Zoom platform. At the end of the presentation, we will also entertain requests for individual consultations if you don't want to ask your question in public, and also complimentary benefits checks. With that said, it is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Alexandra McKillop. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today. I'm Dr. Alexandra McKillop. I am one of the functional medicine providers in the north suburbs, so I see patients from the Mount Prospect office, the Kildare office, and then, of course, supporting people from via telemedicine remotely. Um, I have a particular interest in women's health, especially with fertility, pregnancy, um, preconception counseling, the whole gamut there, and so this is my bread and butter. I love talking about this subject and working with patients on it, so it's a pleasure to be here, but beyond that, I also see patients for a whole host of other health concerns. Um, I have specialized training in functional medicine for evaluating blood chemistry, supporting gastrointestinal health concerns, autoimmune diseases, and more, um, and my favorite part of my work in functional medicine is the opportunity that I have to build a deep relationship with my patients, especially in the realm of fertility and women's health and hormones. Um, I find that it is a very personal and intimate subject. And so it's something I don't take lightly. Um, and I'm, I'm honored to be able to be just a little piece of that journey for my patients in supporting them to live healthy and full lives. Hi, everybody. My name is Monique Wheeler. I am a licensed acupuncturist. I practice at the Evanston location of Align, and I graduated from the Pacific College of Oriental Medicine. Now it's called Pacific College of Health and Science in 2008 with a master's degree. I have been practicing since 2008 and have focused a lot on women's health. It's definitely a passion of mine. I love to educate my patients. Um, there's so many things that acupuncture is great at, and that includes women's health issues. Like Dr. McKillop said, I work with women experiencing a variety of health challenges. It can be focused on women's health, but it can also be other conditions like pain, migraines, insomnia, the whole gamut. But I do um, spend quite a bit of my time with women helping them feel their best. And I'm excited to be here and uh, talk with Dr. McKillop about some of these 
these common conditions that we see. Um, so let's jump in. And why don't we start talking about irregular cycles first? Do you want to get us started with that, Dr. McKillop? Sure thing. So when it comes to irregular cycles, that is a very common complaint that I see in practice. Um, irregular cycles being defined as anything outside of the normal predictable pattern that we normally experience or think about when we have periods. So normally people will say, oh, the textbook 28 day cycle, um, my period lasts three to seven days, things like that. Um, the the broader medical community defines a regular menstrual cycle as between 30, or excuse me, 23 and 35 days. However, that's really a, a broad range. And if you have a 123 day cycle followed by a 35 day cycle, followed by a 28 day cycle, at the end of the year, you have no idea when your next period is coming. <laughs> and that can be pretty stressful. And that's a big reason that people will come into the office, even just to regulate something like that. Um, when it comes to regulating your cycle, though, what we understand in functional medicine is that there's a lot more behind the surface or behind underneath the surface to understand about that person's health in terms of what is contributing to that irregularity. We also understand in functional medicine that there actually is a more optimal narrow range for that variability. Again, so you're not having up to two weeks pretty much of variability between cycles and having someone tell you that it's normal because it's not. Most of the time, we understand that cycles come between 26 and 32 days, um, usually with each period being within one to two days of each other um, in terms of what you can expect for the next for the next cycle to come. So 26 days, 28 days, some time in that range as opposed to 26 days, 35 days. Um, and the way that we treat those irregular cycles really comes down to understanding what it is that's causing them. So for example, um, something like PCOS, if you've ever heard of that, polycystic ovarian syndrome is one cause of irregular cycles, which is totally different from hypothalamic amenorrhea, which is a, a excuse me, a different health condition versus um, the type of irregularity in cycles that might come after someone stops taking the birth control pill. And we need to understand what it is in your individual situation that's causing that irregularity for us to be able to address it right the first time, rather than to just give you another birth control pill, for example. A lot of that comes down to understanding hormone balance in terms of watering it down simply, estrogen and progesterone, a little bit of a background on how the menstrual cycle works. Um, there are kind of three phases that we would think about. The first phase starts with day one of your period, and that goes up until ovulation. And the whole point of that phase of the cycle is to get ready for ovulation. Then there's the second phase, which is ovulation. Then the third phase is everything between ovulation and when your next period comes. In general, again, this is watering it down a little bit, but estrogen is considered dominant in the first half of your cycle. Progesterone is considered dominant in the second half of your cycle. And if there's an imbalance in those hormones, whether overtly on a lab range or in relation to each other, you're going to experience some irregularities. Um, and that gives a lot of information and context to what it is that's going on individually. So in functional medicine, that's our approach, pretty much looking at those hormones, looking at other bodily systems that influence those hormones, and then making a diagnosis, which we typically uh, accomplish through testing. Monique, what is the uh, traditional Chinese medicine approach to irregular cycles? Um, yeah, it's very similar. So we do also try to look at what the root cause of the irregular cycle is. Like you mentioned, all of those different background conditions that could be going on. And um, what we're going to do in Chinese medicine is not only take a detailed history of your menstrual cycle or irregularity of the menstrual cycle, we're going to ask a lot of questions about the rest of your body because the body works together, all systems work together. And we don't wanna look in isolation at one part of the body. And that's gonna help inform the treatment. Everybody who comes in to see me is gonna have slightly different treatment and it's gonna be different based on the day. Um, one thing that we do a little bit differently in Chinese medicine regarding the menstrual cycle is look at it as four phases. We look at the menstrual phase specifically because a lot of times I'm really focusing on issues that are happening at that time, as well as, as the follicular phase, the ovulatory phase, and the luteal phase, like um, you mentioned too. So the beauty, uh, one of the beautiful things about acupuncture is that we want to have you come in frequently. Sometimes this isn't easy for folks, but it really is very effective at helping your body get into balance. Whatever is out of balance, we're going to try to address it each week of the cycle. 
until we attain a more regular cycle. And like you, with um, acupuncture and Chinese medicine and Chinese herbs, I see women who have irregular cycles ranging from, you know, 14 to 80 days get to that 28 to 32 day range. It's definitely possible. Um, and it is much more ideal for our bodies in general. Um, speaking of other conditions that women struggle with, let's talk about PMS. Do you want to talk about how you address that with functional medicine? Yeah, so PMS can involve a range of symptoms that um, someone might report, that whether that's a mood change, cramping, breast tenderness, bloating, a lot of times some gastrointestinal complaints outside of bloating can be accompanying that sort of PMS syndrome. Um, and that can include anything from leading up to your period to some of the, the early days of your period and some of those symptoms as well. And just like with the regular cycles, understanding PMS on an individual level really comes down to understanding what else is going on in the body that is contributing and what is that driving root cause. So we typically understand PMS to be coming from a hormone imbalance in some capacity that's exacerbated by inflammation, particularly if there's pain. Um, but sometimes it can be triggered completely by a parallel health condition. So what I'm referencing there is particularly other hormonal systems of the body. Um, and what I tend to see as a pattern in, in functional medicine is a thyroid disorder or a gut disorder, adrenal hormone system disorder, and then how that affects your reproductive hormones. So in particular, thyroid hormones, adrenal hormones, or stress hormones, and reproductive hormones, they work together like a triangle with your brain at the center. And if there's an imbalance in one of those hormonal axes, it changes the angle of the triangle everywhere else, as you can kind of see when I move my fingers like this. And that's because there's such a, a tight interrelationship among those different systems of the body. And when it comes to PMS from the traditional medical model, like if you were to go to your gynecologist um, for PMS concerns, typically they're either only focusing on the reproductive hormones themselves, or they just say, hey, if your period's a problem, let's essentially cut it off. Your foot hurts, cut it off. Your period hurts. We'll do something about that by taking the pill, which the pill, you know, contraceptive function is usually how it's, how it's talked about um, to prevent fertility. Well, preventing fertility ergo involves preventing ovulation, preventing your normal signaling of hormones. You're shutting down your body's own ability to regulate those reproductive hormones. So it doesn't give us the chance to even understand what was going on in the first place. In functional medicine, we have a lot more tools. We can take a look at those thyroid hormones. We can take a look at those adrenal hormones. In addition to reproductive hormones, understand what's going on, not only in that system alone, but also in the ways that it interacts with the other systems of the body. Um, and then we can address it from that from that perspective. And the way we address things in functional medicine, um, whether it's PMS or in a regular cycle, it's always focused on the root cause, but that can involve different tools like nutrition and lifestyle strategies, um, sometimes herbs and supplements that are evidence-based. Um, and in functional medicine at Aligned, we are very committed to an evidence basis. And that can mean two different things. One, that whatever we're recommending to you has evidence in the research that it's going to bring about the elicited effect. And two, that based on your own individual health and testing, that that is warranted for you. So we don't want to just throw a dart at the wall and say, try this, hope it works. Uh, we want to understand the problem and then have a very clear path forward so that you feel better faster without having to just shut off a major system of your body. Absolutely. And that is definitely something um, I work with women with PMS a lot. I think that there is a misconception in the world that PMS is just something we have to suffer through. The good news, and this is something that I started learning in school, is that there are so many tools out there to address those PMS symptoms like breast tenderness, bloating, irritability, sleeplessness, um, and pain. And specifically, like I mentioned before, when you come in for an acupuncture treatment, what we're going to do is look at your body at that time, and we're going to prepare your body also for the upcoming cycle. So if you're coming in for PMS, we want to see you the weeks before you start experiencing that because we want to prevent it. And as treatment progresses, you start to see shifts. And the beauty also about Chinese medicine, I mentioned this before, is the whole body. So you're going to see shifts probably with your PMS symptoms, but maybe with other things as well that you don't really connect because as you said, the body 
works together. Um, another thing that I see a lot, and I'm not sure if you see this too, but are the side effects from the birth control pill. So um, sometimes people, women don't realize how many side effects they're actually having from the pill. And um, acupuncture can be beneficial for that too. Sometimes the recommendation is to change or to talk to their doctor about if that's really the, the best birth control for them. But I did wanna just throw that in because um, I think that educating women too on their options is really important. Now we were talking about pain with PMS. I also address endometriosis, fibroids, painful cycles. I, I know you do too. You wanna to give us some information on the functional medicine perspective on those conditions? Yeah, so one, one particular example of um, a cause for particularly painful cycles is endometriosis, um, which is a, understood to be both in a, an inflammatory condition as well as an autoimmune condition in the literature. That's sort of a newer understanding that has emerged. Um, and that can be one particular cause, not only of pain, but of that PMS, of irregular cycles. When we look at hormones in functional medicine, we tend to see endometriosis as being what we call an estrogen dominant condition. So estrogen dominance is sort of an umbrella term that's referring to a particular type of imbalance between estrogen and progesterone, which for all intents and purposes, let's just say we want them to be you know, nicely imbalanced with each other. You can have estrogen dominance because you just have too much estrogen. So there's a gap. You could have estrogen dominance because you don't have enough progesterone. So there's a gap. Or you could have both of those problems and I've got an extra big gap. <laughs> and so we would address those different types of problems differently when it comes to evaluating all estrogen dominant conditions, whether it's endometriosis or something else. Um, and the way that we diagnose that is always going to be looking not just at reproductive hormones, not just at the structure of the uterus and the pelvic cavity, but also at hormonal levels elsewhere, in particular, um, the thyroid hormones and adrenal hormones, like I already mentioned, and also looking at GI health or gut health. The reason gut health is really important in the functional medicine world, not just for reproductive hormones, but elsewhere, but I'll kind of focus on, on with endometriosis and reproductive hormones here. It's because um, one of the misconceptions about reproductive hormones is that you, you have your hormone levels and you go test it and that's what your hormone level is. Um, however, that's a little bit... Uh, shallow in terms of the context that's that's behind the surface. So every day you actually make new hormone. And if you made new hormone every single day and your body didn't do anything with that old hormone, you would just be continuously building and building and building your hormone levels. And like all biological molecules, hormones break down over time. So you have your great perfect estrogen that you make first thing in the morning. And by the end of the day, it's been exposed to inflammation and, and water and becomes oxidized and you have to clear it away. Otherwise it's going to be building up in your body. And your detox organs, ergo your liver and your gut are responsible for clearing away that old estrogen. Um, and so if we don't have your gut working well to be clearing away that waste product, all of a sudden you're gonna be building and building and building up these partially broken down hormones, which is not only creating an excess of certain hormones, but also an excess of non-functional, potentially inflammatory, problematic hormone. Um, so that's one of the key ways that your gut health influences reproductive hormones and in endometriosis or in, in many other conditions. It's That's why we focus so heavily on gut health in functional medicine, because you need to clear away all the junk out of your blood. Otherwise, you're going to have cruddy blood and you're going to feel like garbage. Um, we also pay attention to diet because with endometriosis and the understanding that it's an autoimmune condition, there, there is a lot of evidence, unfortunately, in the research that gluten-containing diets can drive inflammatory and autoimmune conditions. So it's important for us to look at, okay, how do you respond in particular to some of these potentially inflammatory chemicals in food? And what are some strategies that we can use as an example of one tool to manage your symptoms and to bring down inflammation that could be potentially be helpful for you? That's not a pill. That's not another type of lifestyle change. Um, that being said, managing endometriosis involves looking at all those systems of the body, um, managing them together, piecing apart the delicate web of interactions among them, and then addressing them where addressing the problems where we find them. Um, anything different you do in Chinese medicine? Um, it's it's very similar the way that we sort of approach it. Um, Again, every person, every woman is going to be different. Their degree of endometriosis is potentially going to be different. Their symptoms from endometriosis are going to be different. And then there's also the conditions of like fibroids um, and other painful cycles that I'm going to work with my patient to figure out 
why is this happening? And then a lot of times I do, because women don't necessarily know they have endometriosis, I think it can be helpful to have imaging to see their um, ob gyne doctors and get more information. I love them working with functional medicine doctors too, because getting inflammation down in the body is absolutely helpful to reduce pain. And a lot of the things that you talked about, acupuncture is very good at treating pain. It's very good at regulating hormones. It's very good at like calming the nervous system, which can be, you know, a big part of treating anything that's autoimmune. So what I really want to do is support my patients. I see a lot of women who have difficulty with their physicians, either getting help or being heard. So because I see a lot of women and I hear them describe their cycles, I can say to someone, no, that's really not normal to be in that much pain. It's really not normal to be in that much pain that often. It's not normal to have a cycle that's that heavy so that we can start giving them, um, I'd like to support them in their ability to get better help. And I'm sure you do too. So a lot of it is education as well as just really helping women feel more comfortable in advocating for themselves as well as dealing with the cycle. Endometriosis and fibroids oftentimes take a long time to treat because they can be pretty severe conditions. However, the sooner you know that, the better, in my opinion. Um, we one other, about if you don't oh, mind, I have one other thought just to chime in there. Um, one of the things that I really appreciate about Chinese medicine, similar to functional medicine, is that we both take a whole picture approach to a person's health. So with something like endometriosis as a good example, um, of course, it's understood to be a, a problem of the reproductive organs. However, it also affects the gastrointestinal organs. There can be tissue that grows on the bowel and things like that. Absolutely. And the way our traditional medical model is set up is you go see a GI doctor for your stomach problems. You go see a gynecologist for your period problems. You go see a cardiologist for your heart problems. And none of those providers talk to each other, but the systems right. of your body do talk to each other. And it's really important to understand that web of connections. And so I love both of the philosophies that we both share in that we address those things and understand the nuances and how that feeds forward into the whole person, um, because you are not just an amalgamation of your period symptoms. <laughs> There's a lot more to you and your health. Absolutely. And that's one of the best things about um, Aligned, in my opinion, is that we share patients. And so if I see a patient and they aren't familiar with functional medicine or chiropractic or even nutritional counseling, I can say, hey, these things could be really beneficial to you. And then refer them and then also speak to that, you know, referring doctor about how is this person doing? What do we want to recommend? So I really love the fact that we have that kind of a community here because I think it is a huge benefit to actually the patients as well as to me as a provider. I love having other people's opinions and information. Um, did you want to talk a little more about PCOS? That's definitely something that I treat a lot, but I know we talked in the um, in earlier about it, and, and you might want to bring up a few more comments. Yeah, PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome is another very common condition among women, particularly women who have concerns about their periods or their fertility. Um, typically, uh, PCOS is diagnosed when a patient meets at least two of three criteria, and those criteria are elevated levels of androgens, which are testosterone and DHEA on blood work. Um, irregular periods, or we would call it ovulatory dysfunction. Um, and then the third one would be the polycystic appearance of ovaries on ultrasound. So you don't need all three. Many people do have all three in order to be diagnosed with PCOS. The traditional medical approach for addressing PCOS, if someone doesn't have an active fertility concern, is to go on the birth control pill because it fixes those irregular cycles and the high androgen levels and all of the symptoms that come along with the hormone imbalances. However, by shutting off your body's own signaling, you're essentially allowing the problem to fester. It doesn't stop you from developing cysts. It doesn't stop you from having certain levels of hormones. Um, what's different in functional medicine is that we understand there are actually several different types of PCOS. It's not all just one thing. And we address those different types of PCOS differently. So there's a particular type of PCOS that is known for being insulin resistant. So someone who has high testosterone at the ovarian level, testosterone tends to drive insulin production. And then unfortunately, insulin production drives higher testosterone levels in women. Um, and so there's kind of that circle that needs to get interrupted. 
There's also a, another subset of PCOS called adrenal PCOS, um, and that's coming from the DHEA portion of androgens. So like I mentioned, testosterone and DHEA are two androgen hormones, but DHEA is made not only from the ovaries, but also from the adrenal glands. So sometimes a person's stress response is dysregulated that leads to aberrant production of DHEA. And then a person has these high androgen levels, not because they have an ovarian problem, but because they have an adrenal problem. So addressing that from that root cause perspective really gives better results rather than focusing all on the ovaries. Um, there's also understood to be an inflammatory type of PCOS where inflammation really is the driver of the problem. Um, and that inflammation can come from any other source, uh, whether that's an environmental exposure or a co concurrent health problem, like an autoimmune disease. There's also a fourth type, which is the post pill type of P PMS or excuse me, PCOS, which is where um, you take the pill that's shutting off your cycle. You come off the pill and then all of a sudden, because your brain has forgotten how to signal to your ovaries, there can be hyperstimulation that leads to ovarian cysts. There can be dysregulation, which leads to irregular cycles. Sometimes there can be um, some imbalances in other systems of the body that induce excess uh, androgen production. So in functional medicine, the treatment depends on the type of PCOS a person has rather than just this one overarching band-aid treatment. Um, how do you approach PCOS, Monique? Very similarly, absolutely. And we would look at the, um, the PCOS diagnosis associated with excess androgens as being more of a damp presentation. So with those women, I'm usually trying to support their spleen, which is part of the digestive system, but is very important for water regulation and phlegm. And then somebody who maybe would have the adrenal presentation of PCOS would be more of a kidney yin deficiency patient. So very similarly, we're I'm going to look at what is happening for you in many systems, as well as what's happening for you around your cycle. And of course, asking a lot of questions. If you just got off of the pill, you know, I also like to know about your mother's history and any sister's that you might have or aunts, because oftentimes some of these conditions are, um, they repeat in families. They may not necessarily be genetically determined, but there can be some um, relationship with what's happened to say your mother fertility wise, or even your grandmother. Um, and I am speaking about fertility because a lot of times people with PCOS come to me they may be coming to me before they're trying to get pregnant, but a lot of times it's it's um, women who are looking for support with fertility, which is another area of treatment that I really enjoy. I know that you treat it too, and I really want to help women, whether they're trying naturally to get pregnant or they're going through the IVF process to give them support on regulating the cycle getting ovulation to be predictable, getting those positive ovulation signs um, like cervical mucus, that's building yin a lot of times in Chinese medicine, and then keeping stress low because when we are in a stress state, our bodies are not given the signal to reproduce, right? Like that's the time you're supposed to be running from the bear, not making a baby. And fertility stressful. So women can get stressed by the process and that's exactly what they don't need to have happening. So uh, let's, I'd love to hear what you do with fertility as well. Yeah. I, I love how you brought up the stress component because having been there myself, I can empathize that by the end of the first month that you're trying, you're staring at so many pregnancy tests that you have taken. And that just sometimes leads to a sense of neuroticism. At least that's how I felt. Um, and what's nice about functional medicine, what's nice about acupuncture is we can address fertility as a, a healthful bodily function uh, before it becomes pathological, meaning before you reach the point where I've been trying six months or 12 months and we haven't been able to conceive, which allows you to have success the first time. So you're not going several months in a row, staring at those pregnancy tests and making yourself feel stressed. Um, Absolutely. And what's nice about fertility that this is one of my favorite aspects is you, we, there are so many different areas that we can work with women and couples on fertility and achieving that goal of pregnancy, whether it's just laying the stage for a good foundation for health, looking at nutritional 
considerations to make sure you have enough nutrition to share with another person should you become pregnant. Um, looking at balancing your hormones, making sure all the other systems of your body are in check um, to prevent some of those risks that are associated. And then going forward to have that very clear trophy goal prize at the end of a beautiful, healthy baby. So I find it to be so gratifying to work with women and couples on that goal. Um, and it's not just limited to hormones. I mean, fertility and having a baby, it, it's obviously involves your gut health. It involves stress. It involves nutrition. It involves your immune system because your immune system has to be able to recognize self from non-self and a baby is not yourself. And so that's a very delicate relationship there. Um, and fertility doesn't exist in an ether on its own. It's not just here's my fertility and here's my rest of my bodily function. It's very delicately interwoven um, into the other systems of your body. So in functional medicine, depending on whether a, a family is working on growing from a perspective of IVF or they're just um, looking to start their family for the first time and start trying for the first time. There are different phases that we would look at, whether that's egg quality, which would be making sure that you have optimal tissue for a healthy embryo, hormone balance to support implantation and to support that uh, conceiving and caring of the healthy pregnancy or nutrition lifestyle throughout the pregnancy as well. Um, and then in addition to timing intercourse appropriately so that you're not just um, trying and trying and trying, but it ends up being the wrong time of the month. Um, and this is where part of that educational piece comes in that Monique, you have brought up previously is um, helping people to understand exactly when you are fertile in your cycle, because contrary to what they teach you in sex ed in high school, it's not just every single day. If you have sex, you could get pregnant. It's really a five to seven day window. Um, give or take that really that pregnancy, that chance of pregnancy is even possible at all. Um, and so learning how to identify when that is with your body. Uh, we have several tools, both in functional medicine and acupuncture for identifying um, that and then helping educate the patient about how to identify it for themselves so that they can go forward and time things correctly the first time. Absolutely. <clears throat> and I didn't mention this before, but I do have a lot of experience working with women who go through recurrent miscarriage or have difficulty um, carrying a baby to term. I have had quite a few patients in that position. It is a very stressful and difficult position. And um, acupuncture and Chinese medicine are really amazing tools to help women not only get pregnant, but stay pregnant. So if anybody's out there struggling with that, I would recommend that if you don't come to see someone in aligned and you're maybe somewhere else, but please, you know, seek some help from an acupuncturist and a functional medicine provider because there is help to be had for that. And I know we want to talk a little bit about menopause and perimenopause. I don't know if you wanted to say anything else about um, miscarriage. No, no okay. Um, yeah, absolutely. That's another condition. Um, I don't know if we want to call it a condition phase of life for a woman that can be challenging. And um, I definitely see women getting relief from some of those perimenopausal and menopausal symptoms, such as temperature changes, mood dysregulation, weight gain, um, sleep disruption. Acupuncture can be very, very helpful to treat that as well as support the treatment of that with Chinese herbs or other types of interventions like functional medicine or even bioidentical hormones. So I do like to help women with those conditions. A lot of patients in my experience do receive great benefits from it, especially with the hot flashes. And I have worked with quite a few women who've been um, diagnosed with breast cancer, unfortunately, and have gone through the process of being put into early menopause because of the um, cancer risks and they're not able to take hormones or even any herbs. And they seem to get quite a bit of relief from some of those menopausal symptoms, especially the hot flashes. So I love to see those um, women as well and support them through that process. How, how do you work with that? Yeah, I, I agree that it's pretty similar to some of the other areas of hormone conditions that we see in functional medicine of understanding the root cause and menopause specifically. Um, I love because 
when when a person talks about menopause, normally there are these notorious symptoms that you had mentioned, um, but not everybody experiences them. And that always begs the question of, well, why not? And that's because menopause is, like you said, a season. It's normal physiological change that everybody, God willing, will go through. It's not a pathology or a diagnosis, kind of like pregnancy is into health condition. It's a normal process in the biological spectrum. Um, and so if a person's having symptoms, really negative symptoms related to menopause, it's usually because there's an underlying problem influencing that reproductive hormone balance and exacerbating the effects of those fluctuating hormones. So those major shifts in one hormonal axis, such as lowering estrogen levels because the ovaries are not producing it as much because of the normal expected change in menopause, can elicit changes in other areas like the thyroid, adrenal health, metabolic concerns, sometimes even exposures to chemicals in the environment can exacerbate those symptoms. Um, and as we've kind of mentioned so far, Monique, a big part of addressing menopause or any of these other conditions is helping patients to understand their own bodies um, better than they did before, um, understanding Absolutely. what's going on, what else is contributing and what their options are, whether that be using a tool in functional medicine, using a tool in acupuncture, using another tool from the traditional medical model and understanding what are the risks, benefits, alternatives, so that you can make an empowered choice for your own health, because your health in the context of your values is going to look different from your neighbor down the street, look different from me, look different from excuse me, whoever else. It's it's allowing you to be comfortable with your own body and comfortable with the choices that you make to care for your body. And our role is to support you in that. Um, and we have lots of other providers at Aligned who share the same perspective to, to come alongside you and help you to take the best possible care of yourself for you. Absolutely. I 100% agree. Um, and I think that that is one of the nice things about um, seeing an acupuncturist or a functional medicine practitioner or a chiropractor or even a massage therapist is that we see you probably more often than you see your own like medical provider, traditional medical provider. And so the relationships that we build, in my experience, are super valuable. And I really care a lot about my patients and absolutely want the best for them. So it's been great chatting with you. I, um, I'm so happy that we were able to get together and I hope this was helpful to the folks out there. I think that it's probably time for questions. It was an amazing presentation, chock full of really great information on a variety of different women's health conditions and concerns and symptoms. Um, I will mention again, if you'd like to ask a question of our providers today to please type it into the Q&A feature on Zoom. We do have a couple of questions that have come in. One was specifically about insurance. So I'm happy to take that question as our guests are maybe typing in a few more. Aligned Modern Health is in network with most major insurance providers. For functional medicine specifically, we are in network with Blue Cross Blue Shield PPOs as well as Aetna. For acupuncture, we are in network with Blue Cross Blue Shield PPOs, Aetna, United Healthcare, and Cigna. If we are not in network for the service that you are interested in with the provider that you have, we do offer self-pay rates and we can submit for any out-of-network reimbursement. So one of our questions was out of network insurance coverage. We can submit for reimbursement on your behalf. We cannot guarantee reimbursement, um, but we can help you navigate with that with your out of network insurance provider. All right, let's see here. We have some topical questions. Um, one here is about coming off of birth control and kind of what to expect, how might the body react, um, and kind of how can functional medicine and or acupuncture support those symptoms as somebody is coming off of birth control. I'd love for you both to answer that. Dr. McKillop, would you like to go first? Definitely. So when it comes to birth control, there are several different different types that a person could be using, whether that's a hormonal IUD or the birth control pill, even within the category of birth control pills, there are different types of pills that have different levels of different hormones, whether it's estrogen and progesterone or progestin only pills. Some of those withdrawal effects look a little bit different. One of the common issues that I see is someone comes off the pill and then they don't have their period for several months, or they come off the pill and they have really severe and debilitating symptoms. And working that up looks a lot at 
hey, what exactly is going on behind the surface that led you to take the pill in the first place? Or do you have an underlying pathology? So we want to understand where are your hormones at, what other health conditions do you have, and what is contributing to your symptoms? Monique, what would be something different that you would do? Well, one of the things I like to do when women are coming off of a birth control pill is to see them regularly, because what I'm going to try to do is nudge their body to get back into its own natural rhythm. Um, and if a woman had issues, like you mentioned, before they went on the pill, those can, of course, return, or they might their body may be completely different. And so really, we're, we're focusing on regulation, because as you mentioned, there's lots of different types of hormonal interventions. You could be on estrogen and progesterone. You could just be on progesterone. You could have an IUD um, that secretes progesterone. So there's a lot of different types of um, pills out there. And I see different responses, sometimes based on how long someone's taken it, sometimes based on the medication. And sometimes women get off of it and then they their cycle is regular like right afterwards. And so it's really, it's really just trying to help your body go through that adjustment as easily as possible. Thank you both so much. We have a couple of questions here about fibroids and this did come up in your conversation. Um, is there anything that you'd like to very quickly recap for folks that may have missed um, something about fibroids and how we treat them, um, whether they're reoccurring or maybe a little bit more acute? Monique, would you like to start? Um, if that's okay, I would love to um, just say a quick thing about fibroids. There is differences in the number and size and location of fibroids that you have. Generally, the smaller the fibroid, the more easily it's going to respond to acupuncture and Chinese medicine, herbal medicine specifically, in reducing those fibroids. If they are larger, um, we can absolutely help them shrink, but sometimes there is, especially if you're trying to get pregnant, a surgery that you, um, that your doctor may recommend, and we can support you through that process. And then I would also refer you to someone like Dr. McKillop, because with a recurrent fibroid, we want to like get ahead of that and see if we can focus on whatever that estrogen imbalance is. We're going to do that with herbs, but it's going to be very helpful to find out what's happening behind the scenes with your blood work. Thank Definitely. you. So and I'll much. just confirm in there that we do understand that there to be a hormonal imbalance that's contributing to the development of fibroids, sometimes even an autoimmune issue or parallel problems in other hormonal systems. So it really comes down to making sure we bring those hormones back into balance, whether or not you have a surgical recession of the, um, excuse me, or excision of the fibroid for a fertility purpose or another reason. Thank you. Um, we, because we had such great information um, during the conversation, we did go a little bit longer on time. So that does shorten our time for questions. Um, we do have several questions about perimenopause and some of them may have come in before we started talking about it, but I think kind of an overarching, um, very short recap on how perimenopause might be a little bit different than menopause or um, what, how we might treat those two stages of life a little bit differently. Um, there's a lot of questions about perimenopause specifically. Um, if we can just give a really quick recap from both perspectives to uh, somewhat alleviate those. But again, for those of you that do have questions specifically, um, something that's going on with you, we do recommend that free individual consultation because everybody is different. Monique, would you just give a quick recap on perimenopause versus menopause? Absolutely. Well, menopause is when, of course, you are no longer menstruating and it's been 12 months since you've had a cycle. Perimenopause can last, um, in my experience, years. And that is when your cycle is becoming irregular or you're having maybe more hormonal symptoms. And like I mentioned before, acupuncture can be very helpful at reducing those hormonal symptoms and getting your body into the best shape possible to deal with those symptoms. And we also have a lot of Chinese herbs that are very helpful as well as supplements. Um, I know that Dr. McKillop will recommend and I've got some experience with some supplements as well in helping you um, handle perimenopause in the most comfortable way possible. A lot of times women are given the birth control pill and they may not want to do that. So there's, there's definitely some options. 
I agree that that definitely the overarching theme between perimenopause and menopause is the fact that those hormone levels are changing. And similar to other hormonal imbalances, we want to look at other contributing factors. But I also wanted to confirm what Dr. Or excuse me, what Monique had mentioned about the fact that yes, we want to address that underlying root cause of what's driving the symptoms, but we at the same time have tools to help manage your symptoms conservatively in a non-invasive way, should that be what you're looking for, so that you don't have to be suffering until we take the time to correct the underlying problem. Absolutely. Thank you so much. That does bring us to time here today. We do have some great questions um, that did go unanswered and, and we apologize that we weren't able to get all of them in. We definitely wanted to focus our attention on content today because there was so much to cover. If your question was not answered in the time allotted, please do consider a free 15 minute consult because your questions are valid and important and we do appreciate them. You can give us a call at 773-692-6700 or visit us online at alignedmodernhealth.com. Our next digital doc is in two weeks on food sensitivities and the differences between food sensitivities, intolerance and food allergies. We hope to see you then. And again, if there is anything we can do for you at Aligned Modern Health, we are here for you and happy to help. Dr. McKillop and Monique, thank you so much for joining us today for all of your time and effort, talents and wisdom. And thank you to all of our guests that have joined us live as well. We hope you have a great day. Cheers.